Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel today. I have got my hands on a Hasselblad X2D 100 megapixel medium format camera and as a landscape photographer, this is intriguing. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen all of the other YouTube reviews out there. Now, I don't think I can tell you anything different about this camera. Yes, it looks good. Yes, the lens is lovely. Yes, it's got great dynamic range. The image quality is fantastic. The EVF is beautiful. It feels good in the hand. It's a piece of art. So why bother watching this video? Well, there's one thing about this camera that intrigued me more than anything, and I haven't seen it been tested too much, and that is the seven stops of image stabilization. Now that is a bold claim by Hasselblad. If you look at all of their marketing material, this is clearly being advertised as a handheld, shoot on the go, really trendy, sexy, fashionable. But anyway, to advertise this camera, as a handheld on the go thing is mental because medium format, 100 megapixel. This should not be a handheld unit. And the reason I say that is because with high megapixel density, any, any minor vibration is emphasized massively. <laughs> So we go back to the seven stops of image stabilization, which in theory means that if I can comfortably handhold this camera with a 55 mm lens at 1 60th of a second without image stabilization and take a sharp image, which I can, in theory, I should be able to take the same sharpness of image at two seconds. Handheld, medium format, 100 megapixel, two seconds. That is exciting. So I went out with the camera for the first time this morning. The conditions were terrible. I went to the coast, it was high tide, and we had blue, 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 blue skies, which is awful. I couldn't believe how bad the conditions were, but in a way, that worked in my favor because that gave me the best opportunity to test this camera handheld. So we'll start with this image, my first photograph of the day. This was handheld at 1.4 seconds. Just say that again, handheld, 1.4 seconds, medium format, 100 megapixel, which is, let's start a drinking game. How many times, I repeat, 100 megapixel, medium format, take a drink. Now, at first glance, it looks pretty sharp, but if we actually zoom in 200% here, you can see that it's not perfectly sharp. But I tell you what, it's not bad. And what else I would say is I was filming with a GoPro on my chest. So I was actually holding my camera out away from my body like this, which is not ideal. If I'd have held it up to my eye, then I would have got a far more stable shot. And I reckon I could have achieved great sharpness at 1.4 seconds. So I took another shot where I actually used a railing, a handrail as a tripod. And this one is a lot sharper, Although kind of cheating. So I went for a walk along the beach and found these bits of seaweed washed up. I quite like the pebbles. I like the fact that we had the waves lapping over the seaweed. So I took the shot at one second. Again, camera extended away from the body, which is not ideal. But look at this, it's not bad. I mean, if we look at the bubbles here, they are sharp. It's not perfect, perfect, but it's not bad, it's acceptably sharp. And of course, this seaweed is gonna be a bit soft because as the water rolls over it, it's gonna move the seaweed a bit. But look at the detail. This is at 200%, handheld, one second. The image stabilization on this camera is phenomenal. And I can completely now see why Hasselblad we're using sexy B-roll of people hand-holding this camera to advertise it. And what this means is as a landscape photographer, um, you know, being able to shoot exposures of up to a second, a second and a half handheld, it means you can react. You know, if you're shooting seascapes, you can react to the breaking waves, react to the dynamic light. That is a powerful thing, even more so when you have 100 megapixels in your hand and 15 stops of dynamic range. So going back to the 15 stops of dynamic range, I photographed the sun just as it was beginning to rise. 
and just the level of detail, I mean there's no blown highlights, I can recover all shadows and just to show you how how good that having that 15 stops is, here's an image right, beautifully exposed photograph of this wonderful cafe on the seafront in the northeast of England, but let's look at the original file completely blown out, well overexposed, photographed at 1.4 seconds. It's not the sharpest actually this one, you can see there's a bit of camera shake here, so that 1.4 seconds is about the limit. But just look at this, you can recover all of the detail in those highlights, um, you know, just, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. The the sensor, the quality of the sensor is great. By this stage, you know, I wasn't having any luck on the beach and I was very much working this cafe, this vintage cafe, this authentic, beautiful cafe on the seafront. This is a, a great shot of the window arches as the sun was rising, but I want to talk more about the handheld aspect of photography in general. So typically, as I mentioned, I'm a tripod shooter. Tripod shooting is great, it slows you down, allows you to be deliberate and finesse your compositions. But there is an argument that actually, by using a tripod, you are restricting yourself in some ways. And I found that to be the case this morning. Not that I was restricting myself, but by not shooting with a tripod, by trusting the seven stop image stabilization, I was able to truly experiment with my photography and shoot images that typically I wouldn't shoot and that typically you couldn't shoot with a, lamp, with a, a tripod. I mean, look at this, photographing through the window into the cafe as the golden sun begins to rise. We have a northeastern gentleman with his flat cap walking along the seafront in the reflection of the window. We have this beautiful interior of this cafe, this authentic, untouched since probably the 30s or the 50s. And the level of detail of this camera, this, this 100 megapixel is fantastic. Now I love this image. I'm gonna print this image in this video so we can really see and appreciate the quality that comes out of this camera. But my point, my important point with this image is that I wouldn't have taken it if this camera didn't offer the image stabilization that it does. So if this camera has got your juices flowing and you are in the fortunate position of being able to afford one of these, then you might actually be thinking about buying it, which means you might be thinking about selling your current gear, which is the perfect segue into today's sponsor, which is MPB. MPB is a place where you can trade your camera gear. You can sell them your gear, you can trade gear, and you can buy gear from them. Now I've used them in the past to sell all of my Canon gear when I moved over to Fujifilm and the service is excellent. You input the details of the gear that you want to sell them, you tell them the condition that it's in and then they give you a price. It's that simple. If you're happy with that, they will send a label, an address label, you ship your gear to them. It's easy, faff free and they pay straight away. So if you fancy selling your camera gear, trading it in with zero faff and a good price, visit mpb.com. So does anybody care about my opinion on various things to do with this camera? <laughs> if not, you may as well click off the video, but I, I wanna share my thoughts on a couple of controversies, shall we say, with this camera. Uh, controversy number one is that it doesn't record video. In my opinion, that is a fantastic thing. This is a photographer's camera, and if it did record video, the video would be terrible anyway because of the size of the sensor. It would have to do too much pixel binning, too much processing. You'd end up paying more money because you'd have to pay for the video feature. Just, I don't shoot video on any of my stills cameras. I prefer to keep that completely separate, and in a worst case scenario where I want to grab a video clip, I've got a phone. So, yeah, for me, I mean, obviously there's a massive market for hybrid shooters, but 
this camera doesn't belong in that market. So I think it's a good decision to take out video or not include video. Is this camera weather sealed? You would think it would be considering that a large portion of the market is gonna be landscape photographers. Well, unfortunately, this camera does not have an IP rating, which is a bit disappointing. However, you can see there are rubber gaskets on the doors and on the lens. So there's definitely been weather sealing taken into consideration, but there's nothing official. And if there's nothing official, then I guess you've kind of got nothing to fall back on if this camera gets damaged. You know, it just, it just reduces the confidence of the user. So with the high price tag, and the lack of an IP rating, you might not be confident taking this out in bad weather, which quite often is the best conditions to go out and shoot. Snow, wind, rain, dust, they're all fantastic photography conditions. And this camera uh, might not be up to the task. Can't say for sure, obviously, I don't know, but it's got no IP rating, so. This camera has one terabyte of internal storage. Hallelujah, well done Hasselblad. Why all camera manufacturers don't include that, I don't know, but certainly it means that I never have to worry about packing my SD cards or memory cards again. So a few people that have reviewed this camera have, have mentioned that it's a bit slow. I, 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 <laughs> what? It's not slow. This is not a slow camera. Not once did it occur to me today that, oh, this camera's a bit slow. It focused fast, it focused accurately, it switched on fast, it powered on fast, it was great. Images uploaded to Lightroom fast. There is nothing slow, nothing slow about it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no Nikon Z9 with, you know, it's hyper speed auto focusing and 50,000 frames a second. But this isn't who this camera's marketed towards. The people who this camera is marketed towards will not find this camera slow at all. So I'm not gonna talk about who this camera's for, but who's it not for? It's not for wildlife shooters. It's not for sports shooters. It's not for people who need an everyday do everything camera for all scenarios. It's not for event photography. It's probably not for wedding photography. And it's not for anybody on a low to middle income because this is some serious cash. In fact, the gear that I have today is, what is it, what's it coming at? 14 and a half grand. So that's about 7,300 pounds for the body and then 3,559 pounds per lens. So 14 and a half thousand pounds, which equates to 14 and a half thousand US dollars at a minute. And for that money, can you believe no histogram? no ability to change the aspect ratio, please. Okay, the histogram you can get away with. We don't need the histogram. This has a beautiful screen. It has the EV scale on the bottom of the screen. It looks fantastic, but no aspect ratio change. I shoot a lot of one-to-one -one images, a lot of three-to-two images, 16 by nine images, four by five images. I shoot all aspect ratio ratios depending on the subject. And the fact that I can't change that on this camera to see my composition as I want to shoot it, is a massive disappointment. I imagine that could be fixed with a firmware update, but you know, if you're targeting landscape, outdoor, nature photographers, get the flipping aspect ratio sorted out. So let me finish with this. This camera is not for everybody, far from it. However, those people who this camera is for, based on my very limited experience this morning, but first impressions are that for those people, this camera is gonna be near on perfect. However, at 14 and a half grand, it flipping well should be.